Hey, what's up? It's Nathan Williams with Crazy Marketing. Now this video right here is a compilation of several videos that help make up the course that you're taking right now. Now to help you navigate through everything, I've provided timestamps down below in the description. So I recommend going, check out those timestamps, watching what's relevant to you. Let's get into it. In this video, we're gonna discuss the interest-driven sales funnel concept. And this is like the 30,000 foot view of the interest-driven sales funnel. It is a lot more complex and there are a lot more moving parts in this, but this is the big broad overview of what the interest-driven sales funnel looks like. So the big idea behind the interest-driven sales funnel is that we are going to gauge our subscribers, our leads, our customers' interests, and then we're gonna show them more of what they've just shown interest in. This way we're better able to relate to our audience. And when you're better able to relate to them, you can make sure you're getting the right messages in front of them at the right time, which will of course increase conversions. So on the left hand side here, we have a straight line sales funnel or our main series. And the whole point of this main series is to gauge your subscribers' interests. And we do that by sending out engagements, whether these are emails, ads, we're calling them on the phone, we're running TV ads, we're just putting our content in front of our audience and seeing how they interact with it. And the type of content we're sharing is something I call 3E content. So it's going to entertain them, it's going to educate them, and then of course, the goal is to earn us more money. And there are multiple ways to put this 3E content in front of your audience. There's the one-off method, where each engagement is unique and can stand on its own. So engagement two has nothing to do with engagement one and engagement three has nothing to do with engagement two or engagement one. So people don't have to like see the engagements in order and they don't really build on each other. Then there's the weekly pushes method. And with this method, you spend about a week pushing a particular product or service or talking about a certain topic. And your engagements may build on each other or they may be unique still, but they're still talking about that same topic, product, service, etc. Then there's a strategy of the long course. And when you follow this method, essentially all of your engagements build on each other. And over a few weeks or months, you're bringing somebody from point A to point B. And you're just teaching them along the way. So think of it as a long course. Or you could also use the story-based series or soap opera series strategy where you're opening and closing different loops and your various engagements are building on top of each other. And of course, you can go ahead and combine these various strategies. You don't have to only use weekly pushes or only use one-offs. These are just some general strategies to get you started in the right direction. So that's the whole goal of the main series over here is to figure out what your audience is interested in. And that's by engaging with them via emails, ads, phone calls, TV ads, etc. And so now, how do we know when somebody shows interest in something? Well, it's kind of obvious. If they click a link in one of your emails or they click on one of your ads, or if they're viewing a page on your website, or if they're purchasing a product or service, they're obviously very interested in that topic. If they're requesting a specific lead magnet, like they're opting in for a Facebook ads checklist, you can be dang sure that they're interested in Facebook advertising. If they call you on the phone or reply to one of your emails, you can be dang sure they're interested in something. If you pass out a survey and they fill it out, they're gonna tell you what they're interested in. Also, you can gauge interest based off of points if you're using a CRM solution. So if somebody reaches a certain number of points, you can tell how interested they are in what you have to offer. So that is how you gauge interest. And now, once you know what somebody is interested in, you place them into a micro sales funnel, which is this right-hand column over here. That looks rather simple. However, I'll show you some micro sales funnel diagrams in just a minute so that you know they're a little more complex than just these little boxes here. Now the point of micro sales funnels are to sell specific products and or services. And there are many micro sales funnel models and they can look wildly different depending on what you're trying to sell. But some of the models include the classic sales funnel, webinar funnels, product launch funnels, etc. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these micro sales funnels. This first one is one I call the simplest sales funnel because it is very simple. So we have our starting point right here. So when somebody shows an interest in a topic, a product, a service, then we're going to send them emails or other engagements like retargeting ads about what they've just shown interest in. And we're gonna try and sell a related product or service. And I typically call this an action series because I'm trying to get the person to take action. And that action is to buy my stuff. And hopefully they go ahead and buy my product or service. But whether they buy it or not, they're gonna return back to the main series where I'm gonna to continue to send them that 3E content. And I'm gonna to continue to gauge more interest and place them into more micro sales funnels. And of course, marketing automation is not the only way to move people through a funnel. So you'll likely sprinkle in some retargeting as well to make sure people are seeing your message. And then we have the classic sales funnel. 
And you've likely heard of these before. They have the tripwire, the core offer, a profit maximizer, maybe a down sell or two. And it's probably what you typically think about when you hear the word sales funnel. So we have our starting point when somebody shows an interest in something by clicking on a link, viewing a page, buying a product or service, requesting a specific lead magnet, etc. And then we're trying to sell them our product here, which in this case is a $7 tripwire. If they don't buy it, we're gonna place them into an action series. So a marketing automation series to try and sell them our tripwire. If they do buy it, we're gonna present them our core offer, which is $97. If they don't buy it, we're gonna place them in another action series that tries to sell that core offer. And if they buy it, we're gonna show them our profit maximizer. And if they don't buy it, we'll present a down sell. If they don't buy that, we're gonna place them in an action series that tries to sell that profit maximizer. And as you can see, we're using that marketing automation to just pull people through the funnel. And of course, we'll likely sprinkle in some retargeting to add that extra layer of communication and to make sure that our leads, our prospects, our customers are seeing our messages. So that's the classic sales funnel model. Then there are product launch sales funnel models and we have our starting point. So if somebody shows interest in our product or our service, we go ahead and use marketing automation to give them video one and then marketing automation to show them video two, video three, video four, and to sell our product or service at the end. And of course, we'll likely sprinkle in some retargeting along the way. And then there are the webinar sales funnels. So we have our starting point. So somebody shows interest and typically with regards to a webinar, it's because they registered for the webinar. Then we're gonna use marketing automation to give them the pre-webinar content to get them excited about the webinar. When the webinar is about to start, we're gonna send them emails like, hey, the webinar's starting, come join it. If they don't attend the webinar, we'll send some emails talking about the replay so that way we can be sure that they see our webinar and see our offer. If they see our offer but they don't buy it, we're gonna start sending them emails and other engagements to try and get them to purchase the offer. And whether they end up buying the offer or not, they're going to end this micro sales funnel at some point and return back to our main series. We will send that 3E content and continue to gauge interest. And as they show interest in other topics and products and services, they'll enter into other micro sales funnels. And of course, we will likely sprinkle some retargeting across this micro sales funnel as well. So that way we can ensure people are seeing our messages. So that is the interest driven sales funnel concept in a nutshell. We're gonna figure out what people are interested in then we're gonna try and sell them related products and services via micro sales funnels. And the micro sales funnels consist of pages, sales pages, videos, webinars, etc. And we move them through the micro sales funnels with marketing automation and retargeting. And that is the interest driven sales funnel strategy. Figure out what people are interested in and then try and sell them products and service based on those interests. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the training. Real quick, I have a special offer that I wanna to present to you where you can get a digital copy of my book as well as an audio copy. Plus, I'm giving away 20 pre-written emails that make your email writing a piece of cake. And finally, I have a seven-figure funnel. It's the first funnel that I built that generated over seven figures for a small business, and it includes training on how to actually set up the funnel. If you're interested in that, plus several other bonuses, link in the description down below, or there'll be a link in the little box up above here. So if you're interested, check it out. Back to the training. In this video, I wanna present an overview of the interest-driven automations. So here's the deal. It doesn't really matter how complex your sales funnel diagrams look. You will essentially have an automation for each step of the funnel. So looking at our simplest funnel diagram here, we have one automation. Looking at our classic sales funnel model right here, we have three different automations. We have an action series that tries to sell our tripwire. We have an action series that tries to sell our core offer. We have an action series that tries to sell our profit maximizer. Now, of course, as people move through the funnel, we'll go ahead and stop or end the previous automations. So if somebody buys our tripwire, we don't need to send them these action series emails. So within our core offer automation, we would end this action series and start trying to sell our core offer. And then same thing with the profit maximizer. If somebody purchases our core offer here and they move on and we're trying to sell them our profit maximizer, this action series would end this other core offer action series because they've already purchased the core offer and we don't need to keep trying to sell it to them. Right, that should make some sense. We've discussed it before in previous sections. Now same thing with our product launch funnel. We might send a few emails trying to get them to watch video one, but if they watch video one right away, like in the first email we send, there's no point in sending emails two and three that are sending them back to video one because they've already watched video one. So they would enter into our part two email automation series over here, which would end this part one automation and it would try and get them to watch video two. And as soon as they watch video two, we'd move them into the part three automation. 
which would of course end the part two automation because they've already watched video two and now I'd be trying to get them to watch video three. And as soon as they watch video three, we'd place them into this part four automation, which would end the part three automation and also push people to our video sales letter or our sales page and try and sell our product or our service. And the same thing applies with our webinar automations. So hopefully that's making some sense and you see that we have different automations per each phase within our micro sales funnels. And ultimately it'll kind of look like this diagram which should look familiar because we created it in an earlier section. So we have our main series over here and we're sending out those interest gauging emails, the three E content, trying to see what people are interested in. And so let's say that email number two takes people to our active campaign course which triggers the start of a micro sales funnel. And I have the micro sales funnel outlined right here in the top right hand corner. And you see right here, tag is added, looked at active campaign course. So we'd have an automation set up that would add the tag looked at AC course if the individual visits our active campaign course sales page. And so now we know, hey, they're interested in our active campaign course. So let's go ahead and send them some more information about active campaign and our course. So then we send them email number one over here and we're like, hey, here are some student results from our active campaign course, check them out. So they click the link in the email, they go look at the results and they're like, oh, this is awesome. I'm gonna buy the active campaign course. And when they purchase a course, the tag purchase AC course is added to their profile. And again, this purchase tag is usually added through the shopping cart platform. So via whatever way you're taking payments, whether you're using a tool like Thrivecart or Samcart or Shopify or WooCommerce or using ClickFunnels and you're connecting to ActiveCampaign through Zapier. Whatever tool you're using to connect to ActiveCampaign so you can apply that purchase AC course tag to that subscriber. So they purchased the ActiveCampaign course. So we're up here, they looked at our ActiveCampaign course sales page and they purchased it. So now we're gonna try and sell them on our coaching plan. And coming back over here to the automation, we're going to end the other automation, looked at active campaign course. So we're ending this automation right over here because the point of this automation is to sell our active campaign course. And since they purchased it, we need to end it. So we're not trying to sell them on something that they've already purchased. And again, we have discussed this all before. So hopefully it's not brand new to you and hopefully you're following along with these. So now we're over here. They've purchased our active campaign course and now we're trying to sell them on our coaching. So in email one, we're like, hey, check out our coaching plan. It'll really help you get the most out of the active campaign course. And they're like, oh, that actually makes good sense. So they go ahead and they purchase a coaching plan. And when they purchase a coaching plan, we're going to end other automation, purchase active campaign course. So we're gonna end this automation over here in the green area. Because again, the point of this automation is to sell our coaching program. And since they just purchased our coaching program, there's no reason to have them continue this automation. And so we're over here and we're gonna send them email number one. We'll wait a day, send them email number two, wait a day, and then we'll place them back into our main series by adding our main series tag. And these emails one and two right here after they purchase coaching is essentially an onboarding series. Like, hey, welcome to the coaching program. Here's what to expect, yada, yada. And as you see, we end by going to the main series. And also, as you see with these other action series, if they don't purchase the corresponding product, like this action series is trying to sell the active campaign course, and this action series is trying to sell our coaching plan, if they don't purchase either of those, they're still going to come back through and go into our main series, just like this diagram over here represents. So this is the active campaign course action series that we're trying to sell the active campaign course on. If they don't buy, they come all the way through the automation. We're going to put them back on the main series. And then same thing with our coaching action series. If they don't buy, they come all the way through this automation. We put them back on the main series over here. And then of course, if they buy everything, they'll come back down and go all the way to our main series again. So that's an overview of the interest driven automations that we're going to be building. I really hope I'm not like blowing your mind right now because I can see this is getting really complicated with all these diagrams everywhere. But hopefully you've gone through the rest of the course and all these elements have been building on each other. And right now we're at like the capstone module. And this is like the Mac daddy of all the marketing automation that you're gonna learn. So it is kind of advanced and if you don't have that foundation from the earlier training, I do recommend you go back and you watch it and really dive into it and understand it. And moving forward, we're gonna go ahead and set up an interest-driven sales funnel. So stay tuned for that. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and discuss the active tag. Now, when we're following this interest-driven sales funnel strategy, we're sending a bunch of correspondence through the main series and we're trying to gauge subscribers' interests. And if interest is shown, we're placing them into a micro sales funnel where we're gonna try and sell them a product or a service. 
Now there is a slight problem here in that if somebody does show interest when they're in the main series and they trigger one of these micro sales funnels, we don't want the main series to continue to send them emails while they're also receiving emails when they're in one of the micro sales funnels. For one, we don't want to send them like two, three, four, five emails in a day as that would drive people nuts. And also when they're in a micro sales funnel, we don't want to distract them with other content that we're sending from our main series. So what we need to do is when somebody enters one of our micro sales funnels, we need to pause our main series emails. So we're not doubling up on the amount of emails that we're sending. And so how we do that is with the active tag. And the active tag is used to pause the main series when the individual is in a micro sales funnel. Now, let me show you what I mean. So I have three automations outlined right here. This one on the left is what I'm calling the basic main series. And so it starts when tag main series is added. We send email one, we wait a day, send email two, wait a day, send email three, wait a day. And we can continue sending emails for as long as we want. Now, when we're employing the interest driven sales funnel strategy, our main series will look a little bit different. So we'll still start when the tag main series is added. We can go ahead and send email number one. Then we'll go ahead and we'll wait a day. And then we're going to do a wait until. So if you remember back to that section when we talked about the wait until function, we're using it right here. So we're gonna wait until tag active does not exist. So when our subscriber does not have the tag active and the active tag represents when the subscriber is in a micro sales funnel. So if they have that active tag on their account, that means they are actively engaged in a micro sales funnel. And if they don't have that active tag, that means they're not actively engaged in a micro sales funnel. So we can go ahead and send them the main series emails and try and gauge interest. So that way we can place them into a micro sales funnel. So right now the individual will wait here until they no longer have the tag active on their profile. And once they no longer have that tag, or if they didn't have it in the first place, they'll receive email number two, They'll wait a day and then I'll check to see if they have that active tag on their profile now. And if they don't, they'll receive email number three and then wait a day and then it'll check to see if they're actively engaged in a micro sales funnel. And if they are, it'll go ahead and wait until they're out of it. Or if they're not in a micro sales funnel, then it'll go ahead and send the next email and so on. So that's what our main series is looking like now. Now we're checking to see if they have that active tag present so we know if they're actively engaged in a micro sales funnel. And now our micro sales funnel automations have to do something with these active tags. So here's an example micro sales funnel automation. So the tag is added, looked at active campaign course. So they've shown interest in our active campaign course and now we're gonna try and sell them on it. And then the next action we're gonna perform is we're gonna wait until tag active does not exist. So why are we checking if the active tag exists in this micro sales funnel? Well, they might be involved in another micro sales funnel. And we wanna make sure that they make it through that other micro sales funnel before they enter this micro sales funnel. So ideally you probably want the subscriber going through one micro sales funnel at a time. Now there might be instances where you want them going through multiple micro sales funnels at a time. For example, if they register for a webinar, you would want that micro sales funnel to trigger, even if they're already in a micro sales funnel for another product or service that you're offering. So as soon as the active tag does not exist on our subscriber, we're going to go ahead and add the active tag. So now that active tag is present on their profile which will then pause the main series automation until they get to one of these wait until actions. And then we're just gonna take them through our micro sales funnel. So we'll send email number one, wait a day, send email two, wait a day. And then at the end of our micro sales funnel automations, we're gonna go ahead and remove that active tag. So that'll unpause them from the main series. And we'll also go ahead and add the tag main series in case for some reason they don't already have that tag. So we can go ahead and start the main series from the top. So the active tag helps you pause your main series when they're actively engaged in a micro sales funnel. And it also helps to make sure that you're not triggering multiple micro sales funnels at the same time. So you don't wind up bombarding people with tons and tons of emails. So the active tag is certainly very handy and we're gonna be using it in these following examples. All right, so this is it. This is the Mac Daddy video right here. And I'm presenting an entire interest driven sales funnel to you. And we're looking at essentially all the automations that are making up an interest driven sales funnel. Of course, there might be more automations than what you see right here. It just depends on how big your funnel is, how many products you're offering, how many emails your main series consists of, etc. Now, if you don't understand tags at this point, if you don't understand automations, if you're just struggling with active campaign and the basics, stop this video right now. 
It's going to be way too far over your head and it'll frustrate you to no end. So stop the video now if you're not understanding tags and automations and just how ActiveCampaign kind of functions. Go back to the beginning, study the basics, get an understanding of tags, understand the automations, understand the workflows, and then make your way back to this video. But if you are struggling anywhere along the way and you feel lost already, stop this video. Now, if you are understanding what's been going on in Active Campaign, then this is not as intimidating as it looks, I promise you that. It's just essentially 17 fairly simple automations. And these are automations that we've already made in previous videos, so it's nothing new. It's just all mapped out in one place right now, so it looks like a whole heck of a lot, but if you made it this far and you're understanding it, it's not that complicated. Now I'm going to zoom in and we're going to walk through it together. So here we are at the starting point. We have our lead magnet automations. And again, these automations start when tag LM colon lead magnet name gets added to the user's account. We send them an email with the lead magnet. We go ahead and wait a day. And then we add the tag main series, which starts our main series automation, which as you recall, sends three E content. And the three E stand for entertaining, educational, and earning type content. So in this particular main series example, we have email one. I'm going to be sending people to a blog post. And that blog post talks about topic A. And at the bottom of the blog post, I have a link to product A, which is a related product to topic A. Then I'm going to go ahead and wait two days. And then I'm going to make sure that tag active does not exist. So I want to make sure they're not actively engaged in a micro sales funnel. And then I'm going to go ahead and send email number two, which is a different blog post about topic A. And at the end of that blog post, I'm linking to product A, which has to deal with topic A. And then I'm going to go ahead and wait two days. And then I'm going to go ahead and check if the active tag does not exist. If it does not exist, I'm going to go ahead and send email number three, which takes them to sales page for product A. So you see the three pieces of content I am sending out all have to do with topic A and product A. I'm doing like a weekly push on product A. And I'm trying to get them to look at that product A. That's the whole goal of this main series automation. Now I also have this goal action right here. So if the contact has the tag purchase product A or the tag looked at product A, then they'll have achieved this goal. And remember, if somebody achieves a goal, they'll jump straight to this goal. So again, at the point of this blog post is to get people to look at product A, and this blog post is to get people to look at product A, and then this sales page is product A. And my whole point is to get them to look at product A, then that's the goal. And if they looked at it, then that's awesome. That's what I wanted them to do. And then we're just moving down our main series. So wait until tag active does not exist. And then we're going to add tag main series too. So we're going to continue our main series, but it's in a different automation. And this automation is focused on selling or getting people to look at product B. So email one here takes people to a blog post that talks about topic B. And at the end of the blog post, I'm talking about product B. Email two is another blog post where I'm talking about topic B and I'm trying to sell product B that relates to topic B. And then email three is just a direct email to product B sales page. So I'm really trying to get them to look at that product B. And again, we have this goal action here. So if they've already purchased product B or they've already looked at product B, they'll jump down to this goal and they'll skip any of these previous emails because they've already achieved the goal we want them to achieve, right? Hopefully that's making sense. And so we'll continue on down our main series and here we're adding tag main series three. So this will start the third part of my main series, which is entirely focused on selling product C. So this first email sends a link to a blog post on topic C. And at the end of the blog post, there's a link to product C because it relates to topic C. And then email two here is another blog post on topic C, which links to my product C. And then email three is a direct link to product C with the same exact goal. I'm trying to get them to purchase and or look at product C. And we just continue down the main series, introducing new products, gauging more interests. So hopefully you see that this main series, it's separate automations, but they're all connected and it's still like the same series of emails. It's just they're in different automations. So they're still flowing down. They're still taking this same path, just they're going into different automations. And each automation is focused on a different topic and selling a different product. And that way I'm spending a few days at a time focused on one topic and one product and really trying to gauge that interest. Now moving over here, we have the add tag 
looked at automations. So these automations are triggered if they visit a product's sales page. So visit product A sales page. Then we're gonna add tag looked at product A to their account. If they visit product B sales page, we'll add the tag looked at product B. If they looked at the product C sales page, we'll add the tag looked at product C. And of course, that would execute these goals right here because they looked at the products that we want them to look at. And also, these looked at tags will trigger our micro sales funnel automations, which we see right here. So our micro sales funnel automations, this is what product A's micro sales funnel automations look like. So tag is added, looked at product A. We'll wait until tag active does not exist. So we're gonna make sure that they're not in a different micro sales funnel before we start this micro sales funnel. And as soon as they don't have tag active, we're gonna go ahead and add tag active. And then of course, when we add tag active, it's gonna pause our main series automation because they'll hit these wait until tag active does not exist. And since they're in the micro sales funnel, they'll have the tag active applied to their account. So let's say that they got their tag active. Now they're gonna receive email number one. And email one delivers a bunch of testimonials about how great product A is. And the person's like, oh, that sounds cool, but I'm not really ready to buy it. So then they wind up waiting a day and email two goes out. And email two offers a bonus if they purchase product A within the next 24 hours. And the subscriber's like, oh snap, this sounds like an awesome bonus. I read all those testimonials from email one and I've looked at the sales page already so I know what this product is all about and I've shown interest in it. So with this bonus thrown on top, I've gotta buy it. So they go ahead and they buy product A and now they're in this automation. So when tag is added, purchase product A. And as a reminder, this tag is added from the shopping cart platform. So maybe it's ThriveCart, maybe it's ClickFunnels, maybe it's SamCart, maybe it's Shopify, maybe it's WooCommerce, maybe it's some other shopping cart platform. But some way your shopping cart platform is connecting to ActiveCampaign and adding this purchase product A tag to their profile. So they're over here in this automation. And the first thing we're gonna do is end automation looked at product A. So we're gonna end this automation over here because we don't need them to finish it because now they're in this automation. They've taken the next step in our funnel. And then we're gonna go ahead and add tag active again. Now they should already have the tag active applied to their account because they'll have received it when they're in this automation, but it never hurts to say add tag active again. As a reminder, you can't add multiple tags at the same time. They either have the tag or they don't have the tag. It doesn't matter how many times you say add tag active or add tag main series. They'll only have it the one time. So we might as well throw it on here so that way the subscriber is active and we're not accidentally sending any more main series emails. And then we go ahead and we send email number one which talks all about product A's upsell. And they decide not to buy it, they wait a day and then we go ahead and remove the active tag and add the tag main series. So if we remove the active tag and they're already in our main series, it'll just release them from this wait until option right? Because we're waiting until tag active does not exist. And if we go ahead and remove it, then it no longer exists and they'll be released and they'll just keep floating down through our main series automation. Now in this particular example, since they looked at and purchased product A, they would actually jump over email three right here, straight to this goal and then continue onward. But I think you get the idea of what happens when you remove the tag active. It just releases them from this wait until option. So that way they can continue through the main series automations, we can continue gauging that interest and continue placing them in micro sales funnels. And then of course, if they don't have the main series tag already, like they conducted a Google search and then they found your product A and they purchased product A right away and they entered your automation way over here, well then we'll go ahead and add the tag main series and they'll just start the main series from the top. So they'll enter in right here. Now of course, when they do that and they've already purchased product A, they'll jump straight down to this goal right here and then they'll move on and go to main series two, and then they'll start learning about product B and topic B, right? Hopefully that's making some sense there. Now we have different micro sales funnel automations. So we have one for product B and one for product C, and it's the same exact setup as this product A one right here. So I'm not gonna go over them because if you understand this one, you understand these two as well. It's just a matter of when they look at product B or when they look at product C that these micro sales funnel automations are triggered and people start going through them. So that's it. That's the big Mac Daddy interest-driven sales funnel automation structure right in front of you. In the next few videos, I will build a couple of the automations with an active campaign, but really, I mean, we've already done that. 
We've already built these types of automations within Active Campaign, so you should technically know how to do that. It's just now, hopefully, you're seeing how it's all connected together and how all the automations work together, how you're getting people to join your main series after they request a lead magnet, how you're going about adding tags, and in particular, the looked at tags through automations, how you go ahead and integrate your micro sales funnel automations, how they have these active tags so they'll pause the main series automations, how you're going to go ahead and remove the active tags at the end of your micro sales funnel automation so that way the main series can resume. Or you're going to add the main series tag so if they're not in the main series already, you'll go ahead and place them in the main series. And then also how we have these goals throughout the main series so we can go ahead and skip ahead if people have already achieved the goals that we want them to achieve like looking at our product or purchasing our product. So that's it. If you understand this diagram right here, you understand marketing automation. In this video and the follow-on videos, we're gonna go ahead and set up some of these automations that we talked about in the last video. Now all this should be like old news to you. We've already created automations. You understand how they work. You understand the wait until. You understand adding tags. You understand waiting. You understand goals. So all this should be old news to you, and I'm gonna go through these examples relatively quickly, and they're gonna be an over-the-shoulder view. I'm not gonna go back and edit the videos or crop anything or zoom in or out. I'm just gonna do it essentially live in front of you, and it'll just be like a good review of what you should already know. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up a lead magnet automation. We're just gonna do the first one over here. So a tag is added, lead magnet number one, email one, wait a day, and then we're gonna add tag main series which brings them into our main series. So come over to Active Campaign, new automation, starting from scratch, create. And when tag is added, lm colon one, add start. We're going to send an email. We don't have an email, so we'll create a new one. lm one, email one, create. Select your template. Oops. Here's your lead magnet. Obviously, you're going to make copy make sense and content make sense and talk to your audience. Hey, first name. Click here to download your lead magnet. Add a link. I don't actually have a lead magnet prepared, so I'm just gonna throw a link in here. Alright, I'll go it. Go ahead, bold it, make it look all fancy, and I'm like, oh that looks awesome. Hit next. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on Google Analytics. Delete out the everything but the automation name, so LM1. Okay, I can desktop preview. Oh, yep, that looks awesome. Not sure. Oh, there's my logo. Okay. Finish. I'm going to go ahead and rename my automation so I can find it. LM colon one. Save. All right, now I'm going to wait a day and then add tag main series. So plus icon, conditions of workflow, wait. Specific period of time, one day. Then I'm going to go ahead and add tag main series okay hit save I'm gonna go ahead and turn my automation active so I click this little active switch up top here and my first automation is done I'm gonna go ahead and create a form for this automation as well just to you know cover that basis so there's so as we already discussed there's many ways to add tags to your subscribers you could use the form builder with an active campaign you could use third-party tools like Optin Monster, Thrive Leads, Sumo Me, etc. Your shopping cart platform will be used to add tags to your subscribers after they purchase products and services you offer. So there are a bunch of different ways to add tags. I'm just going to use the Active Campaign form builder for this one. So forms, new form. I'm going to call it the same name as the tag it's adding. So LM1. So I'm going to subscribe the user to a, my email list, and I'm going to also add the tag lm colon one create all 
right, this looks good. Of course, I could go ahead and edit it and all that good stuff, make it make sense. Integrate. Actually, let me go back. I come over here to options. I hit this little gear option, and I'm going to turn off this opt-in confirmation because I don't want a double opt-in. So hit save. And I'm going to turn off allow blank fields to overwrite existing fields. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit integrate. I got a link right here, so let me copy this link. I could send this link out, I could post it on Twitter, Facebook, email, whatever, and people could go ahead and opt in. So let me just do that real quick. Nathan, Nathan plus test opt at crazymarketing.com. Hit submit. Thanks for signing up. If I come back in, save and exit. If I come back over to my contacts over here, I got Nathan plus test stop. You see my name was entered in. You see I have the tag added LM colon one. And then also that I'm in automation LM colon one. Because remember this automation starts when that tag gets added to my account. I can view where I am in the automation. So here I am. I, was, I received this tag. This email went out. So I imagine I just received an email from myself. And now I'm sitting here waiting for a day before ad tag main series is applied to my account. So there we go. That is our lead magnet automation. Of course, yours might look different. You might have a few emails here. You might do something different, which is perfectly fine. I have it very simple and basic right here for this example. But once you know how the automations work and the different options and actions that are available, I mean, you make it work how you need it to work. In this video, we're going to go ahead and set up our main series automation. Now, as you may recall, this particular main series is made up of three separate automations. And I did this so that way each automation focuses in on one topic and one product. So in this first one, we're talking about topic A and trying to sell product A. This first, the second one, we're talking about topic B, trying to sell product B. And in this third one, we're talking about topic C and trying to sell product C. So we're just going to set up this first one right here. We're talking about product A and trying to sell product A. So let's head on over to Active Campaign and set it on up. Come into Automations. Now I already have a main series automation from when I created earlier. You would not have two uh, initial main series automations because you don't want to like trigger two different main series at the same time. So, so you wouldn't typically have this. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and delete it because I don't need it right now. And it just causes some confusion possibly. So now we need to go ahead and add in our main series. So new automation, start from scratch, create. So when tag is added, and we're adding tag, or we're waiting for tag main series to be added, add start. Go ahead and rename this automation, main series. Hit save. Go ahead, look at what we gotta do. We're gonna send blog post or email number one out. So plus icon, send email, create an email, main series, email one. Create. Select our template. Awesome blog post. All right. And I got my blog post right here that's all about Facebook advertising. And then I have it linking to my related course. So this is what I'm talking about when I say that we create blog content and articles or just content in general. It could be videos, podcasts, etc. But ultimately, they're going to link to the product or service we're trying to sell. And as you see, I have related course right here that links over to the course I'm trying to sell. So this is my quote unquote product A. And again, I close out with a link back to the course as well. So I have a couple links in here trying to get people to look at my product. But what they see is me just sharing great content, which is this blog post, which explains what people should optimize for when running Facebook ads. So you see how it's about the topic of Facebook ads. I'm trying to sell a Facebook ads course. So it's all making some sense, right? We're talking about a specific topic and trying to sell a specific product related to that topic. So that makes sense. Okay, moving on. So I'm just gonna pretend pretend I wrote this super awesome copy to get people to click this link. And bold it real quick. All right, that's awesome. Go ahead, turn on my Google Analytics, 
delete out everything but the name of the automation. Get previewed on desktop. Oh, that looks awesome. Finish. All right, now what do I gotta do? I'm gonna wait two days. Conditions, condition workflow, wait. Specify a period of time, I'm gonna wait two days. Now you might wanna wait one day, you might wanna wait three days, you might wanna wait seven days. It really depends on how you want to interact with your audience. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wait for a specific, or until specific conditions are met. And tag does not exist active. Because if somebody's engaged in one of my micro sales funnels, I don't want to send them this next email because it might distract them and take them out of the micro sales funnel. So when they're in a micro sales funnel, I want them to be wholly in that micro sales funnel and not receiving other main series emails that might take away from their experience in the micro sales funnel. So wait until contact does not have tag active, hit save. Let's see our flow chart here. And we're going to send blog post two. So hit the plus icon, sending options, send email, create a new email, main series, email to, create. It's like my template, another awesome Facebook blog post. Okay, and I got this other article over here and uh, that shows people how to decrease their cost per lead on Facebook. And you see again, I have links over to my product, which is my training course on Facebook ads. So you see how my article, my content, basically leads people to look at the product I am trying to sell. And again, I close out with a link over to my product that I'm trying to sell. Let me go ahead and copy the link. Like, okay, here's your, here's the super awesome blog post again. Link it on up. Beautiful. Next. Google Analytics, turn that on. Delete out everything but the name of the campaign. Finish. Let me go ahead, wait for two more days. Gonna go ahead, wait till tag active does not exist. So I wanna make sure they're not involved in a micro sales funnel. So I don't wanna distract them. Active, save. Looks good. Then I'm gonna go ahead and send email number three. Main series, email three. A funky space in there, fix that. Just like my template. Look at my Facebook course. Continue. And then here I'm direct linking to my, my sales page for my Facebook course because that's my, that's my plan, right? I'm sending some content that subtly, subtly, subtly links over to my my training course, another blog post that links to my training course, and then I'm just making like a direct offer straight to my my training course. So paste that link in here. And oh got some All right, next Turn on Google Analytics. Let me fix the name of my email here. Finish. All right, looks good. Now we're gonna go ahead, wait two days. Two days. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in a goal here. So a goal and has looked at or purchased Facebook ads course. So look at or purchased Facebook ads course. So that's my goal, right? If they have tagged purchased product A, i.e. my Facebook ads course, or has tagged looked at product A, i.e. my Facebook ads course, 
then they've reached the goal of this automation because that's the whole goal behind this automation is to show them my Facebook ads course and hopefully sell them on it. And also when, when they're shown my Facebook ads course or they look at my Facebook ads course, they're gonna go ahead and enter the micro sales funnel that tries to sell them on my Facebook advertising course. So remember that's also happening if they only look at it and don't buy it right away. So looked at or purchased my Facebook ads course, jump to this action when, and we're gonna click to add our conditions here. So tag exists, looked at, I'll say product A, or tag exists, purchase product, so if they have the tag looked at product A or the tag exists purchased product A, then they've reached these goal conditions. Hit save. Save. Plus icon. I'm gonna wait until specific conditions are met. I'll make sure that they are not active. Tag does not exist, active. Save. Save. So here, and now I'm gonna add tag main series two. Conditions workflow, contacts. Add tag main, main series two. And remember main series two is all focused on topic B and selling product B that relates to topic B. So we're essentially daisy chaining these main series automations together to create one long main series. And there are many ways to go ahead and configure your main series. How I have it set up is what I call a weekly push. So I'm spending one week focused on one topic and one product, but there's a variety of different ways you can configure your main series automations. We went over several examples when we first talked about the interest driven sales funnel. And I mean, you're in this course, so you are smart and you can think for your own. So do what makes sense for you and your business. This isn't like rocket science. All you're doing is you're talking to your list, your subscribers, your customers, your audience. You know them better than anyone else. Just be yourself, talk to them like normal human beings and you're gonna be okay. So let me go back over here and I'm gonna go ahead and activate my automation. So it's ready to go and there we go. The main series automation, this first leg of it is done. That's trying to get people to look at and or buy product A which in my particular case right here is my Facebook advertising course. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up the ad tag looked at automation. Now this is one way you can go about adding tags is based off of the pages people are viewing, but you can also add tags through links people are clicking, emails people are opening, and through your shopping cart platform. So whenever somebody buys something, you can go ahead and add a tag. You can add a tag through forms, whether it's one of the built-in forms with ActiveCampaign or you're using a third-party tool like OptinMonster, ThriveLead, SumoMe, et cetera. So there are a bunch of different ways to add tags. In this particular example, we're adding a tag when somebody looks at our sales page. So let's head over to ActiveCampaign and set this up. So let me come into Automations, New Automation, Start from Scratch, Create, and with this one, we're going to select when a page is visited because we want to add the tag after they visit our sales page. So let me go over here and grab our sales page link right here. Come back in, paste it on in here. And I'm going to add an asterisk at an end. Sometimes uh, parameters get added to your URL depending on if you're using like Facebook or AdWords or some s parameters tend to just randomly get added to your URL. And you want to make sure that you are properly tracking people. So I always end my entry right here with the asterisk. So that way anything after this content right here uh, will be included and it'll count as them landing on that page. So hit add start. I'm going to go ahead and rename my automation. So add tag looked at product A. Save. I'm gonna hit the little plus icon, contacts, add tag, look at product A. Save. 
go ahead and activate my automation here and that's it that's all there is to this little ad tag looked at automation very simple basically if somebody looks at our sales page this tag looked at product a will be added to their profile which of course will then trigger our micro sales funnel right here which we're about to get into in the next video in this video we're going to build out this first automation within our micro sales funnel automations section so after somebody looks at our product tag is added looked at product a which we did with this automation right up here which we did in the last video so right after they receive ad tag looked at product a uh, we're going to go through this automation right here and let's head over to active campaign and set it up so in active campaign we'll go to automations go to new automation start from scratch create and when tag is added look that product a at start gonna go ahead rename my automation look that product a save gonna hit the plus icon and first things first we're gonna make sure that they're not currently active so they're not actively engaged in another micro sales funnel because sometimes people might sign up for or click through a whole bunch of different pages and they might trigger a bunch of different micro sales funnels at the same time and you don't want them to be involved in a bunch of different micro sales funnels at the same time so that's why we start by checking to see if they're already in a micro sales funnel right that makes sense so we're going to check to make sure that the tag active does not exist so wait until specific conditions are met tag does not exist active save save plus icon now we're going to go ahead and add the tag active so they're not actively engaged in a micro sales funnel well they are now so we need to go ahead and add that active tag so all of our other automations know that they are actively engaged in that micro sales funnel so add tag active save all right now we're going to go ahead and send email number one which let's say contains a bunch of awesome testimonials about how great our product a is so how great our facebook advertising course is so send email create email look at product a email one create select our template people love this course yay okay let's throw in some reviews in here about the course or comments statements success stories etc hit next go ahead turn on Google Analytics tracking delete out everything but the name of the automation finish awesome and then we're gonna go ahead and wait a day and then send email number two conditions workflow wait a day send email number two create select our template more great actually discount on product a continue so save 10% if you join in the next 24 hours link over to my sales page boom okay next turn on my Google Analytics tracking finish all right then we're gonna wait a day remove tag active add tag main series Initial workflow, wait a day. What am I doing? Remove tag active. Contacts, remove tag. Active. And then we're going to 
do add tag main series. So move tag active, add tag main series, so that way they can start flowing through our main series. Now, remember they'll only get to this bottom end here if they don't go ahead and purchase product A, so they don't buy the Facebook advertising course. But if they do buy the Facebook advertising course, this automation will get stopped when they enter this other automation over here. Remember, end other automation looked at product A. So if they purchase product A, we go ahead and end this automation so it would stop this and they would not get to this tail end over here. But we still wanna go ahead and end this automation by removing the active tag and adding the tag main series because they might not buy and we still want them to actively flow through our main series. So that's it for the first automation within our micro sales funnel. In the next video, we'll go ahead and set up the purchase automation. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up our purchase automation, which is part of our micro sales funnel automations. So we got three automations for our particular micro sales funnel in this instance. Uh, your set of automations may look different depending on your micro sales funnel, of course. So let's go ahead and set up our purchase product A automation. So we're here inside of Active Campaign. And I just realized I did not turn on my looked at product A automation. So from the last video, let me turn that on real quick. Come back into automations, new automation, start from scratch, create. And when tag is added, purchase product A. And again, this purchase product A is added from our shopping cart platform. I think I've said that like 5,000 times throughout this course. Oops, purchase, purchase, product A. I can't talk about something else and type at the same time. Okay, so first things first, we gotta end the other automation, looked at product A. So plus icon, conditions workflow, end other automation, and we're going to end the automation looked at product A. All right, now we're gonna add tag active again. Now likely they already have the tag active applied to their account, but it doesn't hurt anything to add it again. They're not gonna have eight active tags assigned to their account. They'll either have one active tag or they'll have no active tags. So active, hit save. All right, now we're gonna send email number one. It's like, hey, thanks for buying the course. Check out our upsell product. So send email, create email, purchase, purchase, product A, email one. Create. Go ahead, throw in a template. Thanks for buying. Now go buy this. Continue. You are awesome. Now buy my other product. And we of course link to our other super awesome product that we want them to buy. It's our upsell product. Turn on Google Analytics delete out everything but the name of the automation, finish. All right, come back over here. We're gonna wait a day, remove tag active, add tag main series. Wait one day. Go ahead, remove tag. Active, which remember, releases them. So that way they can actively flow through our main series and they're out of our micro sales funnel. We're gonna add tag main, oops, main series, save. And there we go, that's our automation for when people purchase product A. Let me go ahead and activate it, and that's all there is to it. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and create the last automation that I'm going to demonstrate, and it is if they purchase the product A upsell, which is again, another purchase type automation. It's just in this time, it's just this time they're purchasing the upsell to product A. So let's go into active campaign, go to automations, and I'm gonna make this one real nice and quick. So basically, since it's a purchase type automation and it looks exactly like this one with a couple exceptions, 
Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. Yes. So it's copying. So here we go. Let me go ahead and edit it now. So this is purchase product A upsell. Save. We're going to change the name of the tag that gets added. So product A upsell. Okay. We need to change out the automation we're going to end at they purchase the product A upsell. We're going to end the purchase product A automation, right? So we're going to end this automation if they purchase the upsell because the point of this automation is to sell the upsell. So we're going to end it if they buy the upsell. Save. Go ahead and edit my email. You are so awesome because you bought everything I make. Boom. Next. Go ahead and change the name of the email. So purchase product A upsell email one. Customize my Google Analytics. Purchase product A upsell. Done. Finish. And everything else doesn't need to be changed. Hit active. And there we go. There's my purchase product A upsell automation. Now, what I need to do is go ahead and put labels on these automations because they, you see it starts getting very full and overwhelming very quickly. And again, I could search through the automations for what I want, or I could go ahead and assign labels. So this is a lead magnet automation. So I'll add the label lead magnet. Here's a looked at. I don't have a label for looked at yet. So look at. Oops. Looked at, add label, looked at. Here's my main series automation, which I consider a core automation. Now I've also seen people create labels for the particular funnels. So like all the all the automations for one funnel would be within one label. Uh, right here I'm doing more like categories. Like if it's a lead magnet automation or a purchase automation or a looked at automation. But I mean, whatever makes sense. I just know that after you have a hundred and some odd automations, it can become very overwhelming. So you need some sort of way to organize it and labels are one way to do it. And of course, using proper naming conventions is another way to do it. So I also need a label for add tag looked at. Add tag looked at. Throw you in there. And here's a purchase automation. Two purchase automations. Purchases. All right, so now I'm all, all organized and can quickly navigate through all my automations to find exactly what I'm looking for. And that's that's it. I, we went through this entire interest-driven sales funnel. Uh, we explained the concept. We explained the automations involved. We built at least one set of the automations so you understand how those all fit together. But you likely already understood this before coming to this section because we already covered automations throughout the course. And I mean, this is it. This is this is the interest rate sales funnel, and this is the Mac Daddy concept. Um, go out there and crush everything. In this video, I want to talk about the automations map feature, which is under automations, and then you'll see automations map. And it's a very helpful tool because it shows you how your automations are connected together. Like I have hundreds of automations in this particular account, so it's kind of can be overwhelming as to what is connected to what and how do people get there and things of that nature. And that's what the automations map shows us. So let's go into automations map. And here's all of our automations in this particular account. And we could scroll over maybe. There we go. So let's dive into one of these. Let me go with any label, lead magnet. And I'll start with my 18 free funnels automation. So I'm click into it. And so here we go. LM 18 free funnels and then it gives us to LM to number one and then inactive reset 
And you'll notice these green circles. So green circle means that it is an active automation. So it will fire. If it was an inactive automation, then it'd be red. Also, you'll notice these bars here or arrows. They're showing that the subscriber will flow through to these other automations. Whereas if it's a red one, it'll like stop an automation. So hopefully we'll see a red one soon and you'll see what I mean. But let's go with LM to one, see what that's about. All right, so LM to one is a very popular automation. As you can see, a whole bunch of different automations feed into LM to one, right? So that's kind of cool to see. And then what does LM to one do? Well, it does that active reset automation. And then it also sends people to digital marketing strategy DMS. So let's click into that one, see what that does. All right, so we got a couple coming into here. So we got LM to one going into digital marketing strategy, and we also have webinar automation going into this one. And then this one's going to the sales funnel book and also that inactive rest one or reset. And then let's just go into the sales funnel book, click into here and boom, the sales funnel book. And then we got inactive reset business biz, click into here and boom. You see how it kind of flows through here. So it's pretty cool and handy to be able to map these things out. So now we know we went from sales funnels to automation. Now we're going to Facebook and then we go into optimization and then that looks like the end. And I'm sure as you notice on the right hand side, we have the automation details. So it gives us a breakdown of the connections. So this one starts the inactive slash reset automation. So this one over here, when blah, blah, blah happens. So all these 16 different triggers. It is also, this one is started. So the optimization one is started by the Facebook FB automation over here when the opt tag is added. So this Facebook FB automation adds the opt tag, which starts this automation here. We can view the list of contacts in the automation. We can check out the campaigns if they pertain to anything or goals, if we had any goals going on here. And just for fun, we'll click into inactive reset. And we see that it's fed by all these other automations and then it leads into inactive wait eventually. And that's really it for the automations map feature. I just wanted to point it out to you and it's a great way to follow your automations and make sure that they're flowing the way you think that they are. There's often been times where I thought it was going one direction, but it was actually going into a completely other direction or it was going into an automation that was off or inactive. And that's obviously not good. So. After you've set up a bunch of automations and you've connected to them together, like with a main series or something like that, it would be a good idea to go through and make sure that it is connected like you think it is. And you can do that easily by using the automations map. Alrighty, so I hope you enjoyed the training. Now I have a quick special offer for you. So if you want a digital copy as well as an audio copy of my book here, as well as 20 pre-written emails to make your email copywriting a piece of cake. And I also have a seven figure funnel. It's the first funnel that I built that generated over seven figures of revenue for a small business. And the funnel includes a course on how to set it up and also how to actually sell that funnel to small businesses. So if you're interested in starting a digital marketing agency, that course and that funnel are, are an ideal option for you and there's a bunch of other benefits and stuff bonuses and stuff anyway link in the description down below or there's going to be a little button probably up here in the video if you're interested in checking it out yeah just just check it out if you're interested um and other than that i hope you have a great rest of the day